Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can add in lasers uh, to hit an object that we can we deem as hittable. So you can see here that as I click and fire, uh, we've got our lasers coming up, with particles spawning where we hit, and obviously you can see up there we have the laser bar, the heat kind of going up as we fire. Uh, we've got the boost bar, we've got that working, and the laser it'll heat up and we can keep on heating it and firing whilst it's heating up but if it gets to the oh sorry i got out of my ship so we fire it up until it overheats you can see that we can't fire again until it's 50 percent cool and then we can start our firing again okay so let's just jump straight into it um so we've got our ship here uh, and we're going to uh, add add some lasers and some uh so the first thing i'm going to do uh, i'm actually going to add a different script I'm, i want to try and keep this a bit more organized than I usually would. So I've got my spaceship script here and I've got the ship movement settings. More accurately, I might rename this to spaceship movement. So I'll do that now because then we can have a bit more of a general spaceship script if we if we need to. Um, I just want to kind of compartmentalize uh, everything. So let's just, within Visual Studio, let's just uh, double click uh, spaceship and then rename this to spaceship movement and then i'm going to hit apply and then you can see that it's renamed the file as well um, and it will have renamed any sort of instance if this has been referenced anywhere else um that's what happens within visual studio i'm not sure about visual studio code um but if you ever rename the class here you need to re uh, make sure that you rename the file the actual file name uh the same thing so let me just let this reload, it might take a while. So go into our scripts, uh, no, not scripts. Why is it in the scripts? Spaceship, let's just drag these into our scripts. So we've now got our spaceship movement. Um, if I'd have changed this here and it hadn't have reflected on the file, I could just uh, press F2 and then rename that to make sure it matches this uh, class spaceship mono behavior, like this bit here. Uh, make sure it matches exactly so back in our ship we'll just close this uh, just to collapse it and now we can add in a spaceship um laser or spaceship shooting script just you know down the line we may want um we've got minor lasers we may want to put like actual like like rail guns on there or like cannons or something and we could just do everything through this sort of script and manage it that way so spaceship shooting there's probably a better name for that but we'll just go with this like that add itself and drag this into our scripts folder uh, i'm actually just going to drag the player controls into the scripts folder as well um Okay, so now let's just open up our spaceship shooting script here. So for now, I'm just gonna get rid of all of that just so we can start fresh. And um, I mean, there's a lot of variables we're gonna need for um, for this. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them in, but then I'll, I'll go through them uh, sort of one by one. Uh, and obviously feel free to pause the video so you can copy these down. Um, so the first thing I've got here is I've got a, a header and I've put hard point settings and then we've got header laser settings. So hard points is going to be a transform array and we're just going to use some empties on our ship to say like where the actual gun position is, like where the lasers should fire from. And down the line uh, you could have two hard points but you could have lasers on one hard point, um, cannons on another, so it's good to keep track of our hard points. Um, we may end up make we, you may end up wanting to make like a hard point script specifically. Then this would be a uh, private hard point array. Um, but we're just going to leave it as a transform array for now. Uh, the next thing we've got our serialized field private layer mask, and this is the shootable mask. So this is going to be what's um, what we can actually shoot. So for example, uh, an asteroid. So for example, an asteroid or uh, an enemy ship, maybe. Um, and then we've got our hard point range, which is just how far um, we can shoot. 
And then we've got a private bool target in range, uh, which we're going to make a helper script to sort of deal with that, and it'll provide whether that is whether our target is in range or not. And then we've got our laser setting. So we're going to have um, some line renderers, which are our lasers, uh, which are going to act as our laser beams. And um, we've got a particle system, which is just the laser hit particle. So they're going to appear where we actually, when, when we hit an asteroid, we'll spawn in some particles to show that we're actually hitting it. And then I've just got mining power, which is sort of almost the damage we're going to do to the asteroids. Um, and then we've got a laser, a laser? We've got a laser heat threshold, which is going to, um, which is going to control how much heat the guns can have before the overheat. Uh, we've got a laser heat rate, which is how fast they're going to heat up. Uh, we've got a cool rate, which is how fast the heat's going to dissipate. And then we've got some, um, and we've just got some stuff here. So a current laser heat, and then whether we have overheated or not. So that'll stop us being able to fire our lasers if we've overheated. So let's just go back, just save that. And let's just go back into Unity. So now we'll see on our spaceship here, we've now got the spaceship shooting script. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a layer uh, we'll do layer six. I'm just going to rename this shootable and go back to our ship. So the first thing we can do, shootable mask, is shootable. For hard points, so um, if we just right click on our ship and add uh, an empty, so create empty, uh, I'm just going to call this hard points, and this is going to contain all of our hard points. We can just leave that at zero, zero, that's fine. Um, and then I'm going to create uh, another empty and call this hard point 01. I will duplicate that and we can rename this to hard point 2. Obviously, you can have as many hard points as you want. Uh, I'm going to select them both and I'm just going to give them a little symbol, a little graphic just so we can see them in the inspector, uh, actually in the scene view, sorry. Um, so we'll select the little red dots and then if we drag these out, you can see now we've got these red dots. Um, I've still got them both selected. I'm just going to pull them forward. And then we fire, like, so our, our camera is kind of from this point of view, mainly. Um, so it depends where we want our lasers to come out from. Uh, there's no obvious, like, obvious cannons on this uh, ship model. If we had our own ship model, obviously there would be lasers, like, sticking out, and we'd put them there. Um, just for sort of simplicity's sake, let's just drag these down. I'm actually going to set them down on the Y, put 3.5 on the Z, and then for hard point one, we'll just move it out on the X and see where that comes out. So have that as, as one, one point. So we'll do 1.05, and then for this one, we can do negative 1.05. So when we fire, our lasers are going to come out from kind of here. Um, if we wanted, we could add in uh, under ship graphics. I'm just going to right click 3D object, add a cube in and just call this uh, laser. I just want it to be a bit more visual. It's just going to be a bit easier to kind of see what's going on. Uh, point one, point one, actually point two, point two and point two, just to get a small cube. And then I'm going to duplicate that again, parent it to the other one, and then I'll do point, uh, point five, point five and two, just make it a bit longer. Maybe 0.25. There you go. I know this isn't perfect, but it's kind of better than nothing. So uh, I'll duplicate our laser beam and do negative on that side. Flip that round. Go to our hard point. Kind of line that up with the end of our laser barrel here. 
3.597 so let's copy it's gonna copy the position <coughs> paste the position but then put it the hard point two on the negative so we've got our lasers here they'll fire from this point um uh, we may want to move them in the future but for now let's just carry on so uh, we've got our hard points here. We can add in two, and we'll drag in hard point one, and we'll drag in hard point two. Um, and the next thing we need, so I want to create an empty underneath the hard point. This is just going to be for our laser. And I'm just going to add in a trail renderer. I'm just going to make it a bit thinner on the width. And um, we'll go to materials. I'm just going to create a new uh, material. Call this laser trail mat. This can be a URP unlit or URP simple lit. Yeah, we want simple lit just so we can have uh, a mission. And I'm just going to make our lasers sort of red and I'll give it a bit of intensity now if we go to our laser trail renderer um, underneath materials we can drag in our laser trail and then if I just drag it around you'll see so this is going to be our laser beam that's what it's going to look like so I'll just reset that back to uh, zero zero. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna unhide that. Uh, we're just gonna set that as uh, non-active at first, and then I'm going to duplicate it, drag it under hard point two, reset the position. So now we've got two sort of trails here. Back in our ship under uh, lasers, we can now drag in laser one. Oh. Laser one, line renderers. Oh, sorry, it's not trail renderer. That is my mistake. It's a line renderer. Drag them down. Materials, assign our material. Duplicate that, put it there. Reset its position. Back to our ship. All right, okay. So now we can add in our lasers. My mistake. Uh, we'll leave the particles for now and then these default settings will, will be fine. Um, okay, so the next thing, we need to go to our scripts folder. Go into player controls. And we need to add in a control for firing our weapon. So just fire and we can do a action type pass through a control type button make sure we've got the press only interaction under binding we can listen for oh, you can't really, you can't listen for the the mouse click unfortunately but we can just select mouse left button then we can add in another binding and this one will be um on our gamepad I'm just going to do a uh, button south, which would be the A button on an Xbox controller. Um, obviously for firing, you might want a trigger, um, but we use the triggers for the actual like controls of flying our ship. So we need to use a button, a face button, really. Um, if you wanted, you could maybe, if you wanted, what you could probably, what you could maybe do is put up and down on like A and B on the controller, which would free up the left shoulders for your roll. So you could put your roll on the left shoulders and then you could have firing on your triggers um but for now maybe we'll do that uh, another time but for now let's just keep it like this so button south close that okay so back to our script um we just need to do a uh, we need to be using the unity engine dot input system 
And then we want to do a public void on fire with a input action dot callback context called context. And then we just need to get a private bool called firing. And we want to set firing equal to context dot performed. And if we go back into Unity, go to our ship, we've got player input here, uh, go down events, and then we can open up our ship controls. We've got our fire control here, and we can drag in our space shooting script, spaceship shooting on fire. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of functions now to actually handle the firing. So we're going to have a private void. Uh, handle laser firing and we're going to call this from our private void update method so handle laser firing I'm just going to do a region uh, input end region So I can close that and get rid of it. Okay, so in our handle laser firing, uh, we want to say like if that we if we are firing and we haven't overheated, then we're gonna want to fire our laser, right? So we'll do our fire laser, uh, which is a method we need to make here. So fire laser. And we're just going to, uh, let's just print out firing my laser. So we haven't overheated. Let's just try this, make sure it's working. So you see here, we're not in the ship yet, but we can see here firing my laser. So when I'm holding down the left trigger, you can see that that's, that's working. When I let go, it stops. So that's good. Um, what we're going to need to do Obviously, I was just fire we were firing the lasers from within the we weren't in the ship then, um, which is good for now, just for testing. Uh, but we're going to need a uh, we're just going to need a reference to our spaceship, the actual ship, because we don't want to be firing the laser. whilst we're not in the ship. So let's just do uh, spaceship settings and we can have a serialized field, private spaceship movement. And we'll just call this uh, spaceship. We're gonna control and click into our spaceship movement script. And this private ball is occupied here. I wanna be able to reference it from our um, spaceship shooting script. So I'm just gonna make a um, property. I'm going to do a public bool is occupied with a big I, capital I, and we can do open curly brackets get, and then we can just return our is occupied variable. And we won't be able to set this, it's just we're going to be able to get it, um, and we'll just be able to get that information without actually well, we had to get this information without changing this by mistake from another script, so it's a good, safe way of doing that. So I'm just going to save that script, go back to our spaceship shooting, and then we can say if we'll do here in the update if spaceship dot is occupied, then we will handle our laser firing. For now, I'm going to keep it on the outside of this just so we, while I'm testing, I don't have to keep flying over to the ship and getting into the ship. Um, but then we'll, we'll move we'll move this into here uh, later. So we've got our fire laser. So if we're firing and we, we haven't overheated, uh, we want to fire our laser. And if we're not firing, we need to deactivate our laser game object. So we're going to do else and then put a for each loop in. And we can do um, var laser 
in lasers. So for every laser in our laser uh, array, we just want to do laser dot game object dot set active to false. And we want to cool our laser when we're not firing. And we'll do a void cool laser. And we can just code to cool down our lasers. We'll go in there. So in our fire laser um, function, this is where we're actually going to handle uh, the logic of actually firing a laser and sort of heating it up. So what I want to do, uh, let's get rid of this. Um, I'm going to, we're going to be doing a ray cast. So I, want, I need to get a ray cast hit um, and call this hit info just so we can get information about what we're hitting. And then I'm going to go back to unity. And I'm going to make a folder for our helper scripts. So we've got our Cinemachine camera switcher. That's a help script that can go in there. Extract it over. And then I'm going to make a new script. And I'm going to call this target info. So this is like the camera uh, switcher script. This is going to be a public static class and it's just going to be called target info. And we want a public static bool is target in range. And the reason we're doing this in a helper script is that we're going to need this information from a few places. So we're going to need to know whether the target is in range from our shooting script, uh, from our UI canvas to sort of change the color of the, uh, the reticle. Uh, so once we're in range of something, we might want to change the target reticle from sort of red to green or just white to green. Uh, and we're going to want some, like, we can show a distance from the target as well. Um, so we can have everything in this target info class and we can call it from multiple places. Um, so we're not copying the same sort of um, raycast code from the spaceship shooting script and then having to rewrite it all out for the uh, UI script. So um, we're going to do our raycast from within this helper script. So we're going to we're going to need a vector three position. Uh, effector three ray direction. We're going to want to pass out what we hit to our raycast hit um, hit info variable. We're going to want the range of our weapons, and we're going to want the layer mask. And this is going to be our shootable mask, or the target, the whatever target we're trying to check within range. That's going to be the mask that we pass in. And we're just going to return our physics dot raycast. And we're just going to pass in all this information. So we've got our uh, position, ray direction. We're going to pass our hit info out. Got our range and our mask. Uh, and I'm just going to rename this to uh, ray position just to keep it position just to keep it all um, consistent and I'm just going to add in um, a little bit of summary code just so we can see this from our other script as well um, so back in our spaceship I'm going to close the spaceship movement script just so we're not got loads of tabs open I'm going to go back to our spaceship shooting script and then in our fire laser script here, we can say that if our target info dot tag is target in range, and we're going to pass, we're going to do a raycast from our camera. So we're going to need a reference to our camera. So private camera called camera. Uh, we'll call it cam. I think camera is already a reserved word. Um, and we'll do a awake function and we'll just do cam equals uh, camera dot main. So is target in range, we can do cam dot transform dot position. 
We want the forward vector of our camera, so transform dot forward. We want to get the hit info and put it into our raycast hit that we've made above this. We can pass in our hard point range and our shootable mask. So we're checking if a target is in range here from our um so from the camera position of where we're looking and where it's uh the direction it's pointing, we've got our hard point range and our shootable mask, and we're gonna pass out what we hit to our hit info so we can um do some stuff here. So we're gonna um Later on, we're going to instantiate our laser hit particles here. And then we're going to loop through our lasers. So for each bar laser in our lasers collection, uh, lasers array, uh, we're going to set vector three local hit position is going to be equal to laser dot transform dot inverse transform point we're going to pass in our hit info dot point so we're going to convert the point that we've hit on the target so we're going to fire a ray out it's going to hit we're going to so we're going to fire our lasers it's going to hit an asteroid hopefully and then what we need to do is we need to convert that point on the asteroid to uh, a local position to our uh, laser just so we can set some positions so we can turn our laser on. So laser dot game object dot set active to true, and then we can do laser dot set position. And it's going to set the position of our line renderer. I'm going to set position one to the local hit position. So line renderers can have multiple points. Point zero is going to be its origin, so where it's located. And then we're going to set position one to our local hit position. So we're going to draw a line from its origin to where we hit the um, to where we hit the sort of asteroid. And if we don't actually hit anything, we can turn our lasers on. But instead of having them pointing like inwards at the thing we're hitting, we'll just have them fire off into the distance. Um, so we can do it for each our laser in our lasers array we can do laser dot game object dot set active to true and laser dot set position position one to a new vector three and this is just going to be zero on the x zero on the y and then our half point range on the Z, so they'll fire out as far as our hard point range. And just to go over this again, so we've, we're have we going to hit an, an object, we need to convert that object in 3D space to our a local hit position, because when we set the position of our laser, uh, we have to pass it in a vector that's local to itself, we can't just give it a vector 3 out in the world space. Um, because it does expect a local position, it ends up going really weird if you don't first convert it to uh, a position locally to itself. And if we don't hit anything, then we're gonna turn our lasers on, but just fire them off into the distance. So if we go back to our scene, and under our lasers, we just wanna make sure it has a index point, it has two positions, it should do by default. And we just need to come back to our ship and under spaceship here, uh, we can just drag the sp uh, like the spaceship into it. Uh, we could also do on like on awake, we could get our spaceship movement component on ourselves just to avoid any kind of issues. So we can do that here. So we can do um, ship spaceship equals get component spaceship movement because we're on the same game object. So and that'll just make sure that that's not null either. Um, so let's go back to Unity. So we just fly back here. See our lasers now pointing and it's just firing off into the distance. And underneath our laser, uh, we just need to uncheck use world space. Um, so we'll do that on both of them. So now when we hit play, 
I just fly back a bit, you can see that as we fire, our lasers go off into the distance. Uh, 100 kind of units forward, um, which is our hard point range. So as we fire, they're coming off and on. If we um, we just come out of play here, and I'll do, um, if we get our boxes, uh, I'm just going to move them out of the way. And just for now, I'm going to do a game object, 3D object, and add in a, uh, just going to right click, go 3D object, add in a plane at 0, 0, 0, drag it forward, rotate it, scale it up. to sort of there. Make a bit bigger. And I'm just going to mark this as shootable. So you see that as we're firing, uh, this is hitting now where our camera is looking from the player. So if I just Let's just fly over to the ship and get in. Okay, so we're in the ship. Uh, I just need to move a bit further forward. So we do our camera position. You can see that now we are shooting kind of on the plane. Uh, we not, I'm gonna need to change some stuff slightly because we're coming from the camera position and the camera forward. Uh, we're kind of hitting down, we're kind of hitting down here, uh, we want it to go kind of from the front of our ship here. So what I'm actually going to do is let's just create an empty here and we'll call this um, hard point middle. And I'm just going to drag this kind of in between our hard points. So this is kind of where we're going to fire from. Um, so obviously the guns start here and the range is going to be 100. So we may as well take the middle kind of distance between them and fire out from there so we know it's going to go straight forward. So I'm just going to make a serialized field and I'll do a private transform hardpoint middle and then when we do our raycast I'm actually going to go from the uh, hardpoint middle dot transform dot position and we'll do the hardpoint middle dot transform dot forward is our raycast out. And we'll make sure we assign that. So now as we fire, we can see that it's coming out from the sort of center of our ship, um, kind of in a way that we'd expect. As opposed to the camera, which is kind of offset and it's actually firing kind of, the, if you think about the middle of the screen's actually here. So it was firing through our ship and down um, well, what we want is actually from kind of the front of the ship. Okay, so to make the kind of shooting a little bit more accurate, um, we're going to want to add in a canvas. So game object, UI, uh, canvas. And then on our event system, we need to replace uh, with the input UI module, otherwise we'll get some errors. Um, so on our canvas, let's just go see it. Um, I'm going to go to screen space uh, overlay and then we want a uh, scale of screen size and I'm just going to put in 1920 by 1080. Uh, you could put in 4K here, um, but just for the sake of this, we'll do 1080, 1920 by 1080. And that just means that it's going to, everything we put in will scale down with the screen size. And this is it's just kind of using this reference to sort of maintain the, the ratio and the resolution of our elements. Um, so underneath the canvas, I'm going to add a game object, UI uh, image. See, that's right in the middle of the screen there. Um, under sprite, uh, there is like a little dob dot here, call it called knob. We'll just make sure that's in the center. I'm going to zoom in on it. I'm going to hold down um, Alt and Shift as we drag in from a corner and just shrink this down. Kind of to about there. 
I actually have a crosshair that I'd made for a previous um, test of this, so I'm I'm going to use that because it's a bit nicer. Um, but obviously the dot the dot works just as well. Um, so I'm going to drag in that, which is this little um, sort of icon here. Make that a bit bigger. Um, obviously, I just made this in Photoshop. Um, okay, so we've got our crosshair there. So now what we want to do is if we go back into our 3D view, go back to our ship. So I'm going to get the third person cam first. I'm going to set this priority to sort of 20, just so it, um, just so we can kind of control the sort of position here. So I'm going to go under our ship. I'm going to get our third person look target. I'm just going to rotate this slightly, move it down, so to about there. So when we fire, we're going to fire forward to our uh, sort of beam there. And then I'll reset this back to zero, go to the first person version view. So that's like 20. Got our first person look target, and we'll just Turn that up slightly like this, just so we're pointing forward. Set this back to zero. We've got our crosshair. Uh, let's go in, enter our ship. So now you can see that our crosshair, we're firing from our camera position. I'll just fly forward a bit. You can see that now we're kind of we are hitting um, from sort of here. What I am going to do though is I'm going to make um, I've made this serialized private transform hardpoint middle, and then in Unity I've got the hardpoint middle here, which is just another empty which I just parented to the hardpoints, and I've kind of put it in between the hardpoints, and then. I'm going to use this for our raycast uh, position. So instead of cam.transform.position, we'll do our hardpoint middle.position. And we're going to fire it forward from the camera's point of view. Um, this is going to make the range a bit more consistent. So we know that it's going to be 100 from 100 units from our actual hardpoints, because obviously the, the ship's quite long and if the camera's back there. The 100 units is going to be taken up by the camera being offset so much. So now if we play, enter the ship and fire, I'm firing from the middle of the hard points. And firing forward from there 100. I didn't have to fly forward specifically to start firing. Okay, so we need to do the kind of heating of the lasers now. So Regardless of whether we hit anything, if we're firing our lasers, it's going to be gathering heat. So we want to heat our laser as well as cool our laser. So we'll do void heat laser. And this is quite similar to the boosting mechanic we did. It's the same kind of logic, but we've just changed the words around. Um, so we can say that if we are firing and the current laser heat is less than the laser heat threshold. Then we want to heat up our laser. So current laser heat plus equals the laser heat rate. And then if our current laser heat goes over our laser heat threshold, or if it equals, if it goes, if it's greater than or equal to our laser heat threshold, then overheated equals true, and firing equals false. So we're not firing anymore, um, and we have overheated. So to see this working, we can do print, uh, and then we can print our current laser heat, and then we'll do plus. Add in a slash plus our laser heat threshold. 
So I'll just fire from outside of the ship for now. And if we keep a look at the thing down here. So as we're firing, you can see our laser heated up. Um, to see it properly exceeding our laser heat threshold, we will have to put that down at the bottom. Because obviously once it overheated it, this didn't get cold again, so we didn't see that. Um, and under our ship here, uh, we're going to do laser heat threshold. Uh, let's just set this to something like 20. So if we fire, you can see that it went up. So every frame it was every frame it was held down and firing, it was going up point. And to make sure this isn't frame rate dependent, I'm going to change this from update to fixed update because fixed update runs on the physics step as opposed to every frame. So if you've got a really high insane frame rate, your lasers are going to heat up a lot different than if you were playing at 30 FPS. If you were playing at 60 FPS, it'd heat up twice as fast as if you were playing at 30 FPS, whereas this kind of locks it. Uh, another thing you could do is we could leave it in update. And whilst it's heating, we can do the laser heat rate times by time dot delta time, and that'll make sure that it goes up according to our delta time. So we'll, we'll try it this way. So with the cooling of the lasers, um, we could have it so it has to go all the way to zero before we can fire again. Uh, but I quite like it. It can, We could have it so it has to go down all the way to zero before you can fire again. Um, but I like the idea of it going down to sort of like half before you can fire again. So you can carry on firing, but obviously if it cools down, you can't fire for as long if you're starting from halfway. So let's just do if overheated. If our current heat, current laser heat, is divided by our laser heat threshold, is less than or equal to 0.5F. So if we're at 50% of our laser heat threshold, then we can set overheated back to false so we can fire again once we're 50% cool. And then outside of that, we can say if our current laser heat is greater than 0f. So if it's greater than 0, we know that we would need to cool it down by minusing our laser cool rate times by time dot delta time from it. So I'm actually going to take this uh, print out here and we'll put this in our update method just to keep track of it that way. So we're at 0 out of 20. You can see that as we um, fire up, you can see that we're firing and it's heating down here and then if we let go it starts to cool down again. So instead of 0 0.25 which is We'll do one and two. So now with the time dot delta time, it should take um, 20 seconds to heat up. So you see every second that's ticking up. And then we're at 10 seconds. So if we let go again, so if I go up and we overheat, so we're overheated and I can't fire again now until we get below 10, which is half of the heat threshold. So now we can start firing again. Um, and this is kind of like the no man's sky thing. So you can fire and you can keep firing and letting go all the way up to that heat threshold. But as soon as you've overheated, you have to wait for it to cool down 50%. Um, I'm actually going to make it so our laser heat threshold, so we can mine. So we need to think of this more as how long we can mine for. So let's say we can mine for 10 seconds. Laser heat rate is kind of, so it'll go up every second that we've got it held, and laser cool rate is kind of how fast it'll cool. So at two, it'll take five seconds to cool down, as an example. Um, 
The other option is again, yeah, you do this in fixed update and then this becomes less time dependent and it's more value dependent, but uh, I think time makes a bit more sense. And then we can manipulate this so we can still control how fast it heats. So you can either have the laser heat threshold be higher or you can change how fast the heat rate goes up. But I think if we leave it at one and two, that means it's going to cool twice as fast as it heats up. Um, and we can mine for 10 seconds before it heats up, which makes sense to me. So uh, we'll leave that like that. Um, and just kind of to show this a bit more, um, which you can follow along as well. Uh, I've got this boost bar graphic that I've made. Um, I'll put this on my Patreon for free, so you can go over, I'll have a link below to get both these graphics actually, the crosshair and the boost bar. And we'll sit, we'll, I can show you kind of this, kind of in a bit more practice than sort of, instead of this down here. So, so if we go back to our canvas here, let's go back into 2D mode and press F to sort of zoom out. So, under our canvas, I'm going to make another image. So UI image. And I'm going to drop in our boost bar sprite. Under image type, I'm going to set this to filled. Well, fill, metal, uh, fill method, sorry, horizontal. And you can see that we've got our fill amount. So we need to change uh, the fill origin to the right and then sort of rotate this around. So the red's at the right hand side. And then I want to check preserve aspect. And we'll just scale this up. Sort of here and we'll drag this up here. So this is going to be our laser bar. You can see we've got our fill amount. So as we fire, it's going to go up and as it cools, it'll go back down again. And I'll just add in some UI text and we'll just call this um, just laser, laser, have it centered, uh, have it left aligned, sorry, but centered in the middle. We want um, to select best fit. We can drag this up and it's black, we want it white because we're in space so we can read it. So we'll do best fit and we could change our max sort of size there. We've got a size that we're happy with and we'll just drag this up, up here. And for both of these, we'll want to change its pivot point up to the top left. And I'm just going to parent the image to our laser text just to keep it organized. And then on our canvas, we can make a new script and we'll call this our UI manager. And I'll do a serialized field. I'll do private um, laser heat image. Oh, private uh, image. We need to do using unity engine dot UI. So we've got a laser heat image um, and we'll also need a reference to our spaceship. So private spaceship uh, shooting, we'll call this um, spaceship shooting, why not? Now if we go back over to our spaceship shooting script, uh, we'll just make some of this information, um, we'll turn some of these some of this information into properties so we can read it from our script. So we want the laser heat threshold and the current heat. Uh, we need these as um, properties just so we can so we can return kind of the percentage. So we've got our current laser heat and our laser heat threshold. These are properties here that we can get them, but we can't set them, so it makes them safe. And then we can do um, void update, and then we'll say that if our spaceship shooting if spaceship shooting isn't equal to null, then we want to 
set our laser heat image dot fill amount equal to our spaceship shooting dot current laser heat divided by our spaceship sh our spaceship shooting dot laser heat threshold and in void start I'm going to say spaceship shooting is equal to find object of type spaceship shooting so it's going to this isn't the most efficient way to do this but it's going to um because it's such a small scene and it's just as, as an example, uh, it's gonna find everything in our scene that is a spaceship shooting and it'll find the first one and return it because there's only one ship currently in the scene that'll work. Um, but I'm also going to set it myself just in case that it doesn't find it for some reason. So I'm gonna drag our ship in here, drag in our image here, our laser heat image. So you see that as we fire, this laser heat bar is gonna fill up and it'll start to go back down. And if we let go and fire from kind of this position uh, before we've overheated, we can do that. But if we reach the overheat threshold, we can't fire again until we're 50% down. So what we can also do is we can make some properties in our spaceship movement script so we can just pop these down here we can go back to our unity scene and i'm just going to duplicate this and drag it down instead of laser here we'll call this boost Change the text to boost. Drag our image down. So back in our UI manager script, we'll copy that. And uh, this is going to be spaceship movement. We'll call it spaceship movement. Private image, this can be our boost image. And we want to say if spaceship movement isn't equal to null, then we want to set the boost image dot fill amount equal to our spaceship movement dot current boost amount divided by our spaceship movement dot boost maxed boost amount. And we'll do the same thing again here, spaceship movement go back to our game here um, go back to our canvas and we'll fill in this so we'll drag in our boost image to the boost image we'll drag in our ship to the spaceship movement script hit play You can see that we can go over, we can enter our ship, and as we boost around, our boost goes down, and then it fills back up, we can carry on boosting. I remember I've changed the, the ships quite slow at the minute, but if I reorientate, and we can fire off and start boosting as we go. And then we can now fire, and our laser overheats as we go. You can see here we're not hitting anything but it's going off just into the distance you can see that's far enough just out into the distance 100 units because we're not hitting anything okay so we're nearly done um i might have to add in asteroids and the asteroid spawner in the next video because this one's already quite long um but let's put in our uh hit particles so we'll do game object create empty and we'll call this uh laser hit particles Particles. I'm just going to zero this out. Uh, 
and in our prefabs folder, I'm going to drag in our laser hit particles as a prefab and then double click to enter it. I'm just going to look at it here and then we'll do laser hit particles and then we can um, put in a particle system underneath renderer. Um, I'm going to drag in our material that we made for the laser trails. And under billboard, I'll do, uh, and then under render mode, I'm going to hit mesh and we can just search for um, this little sphere. So these are quite big. Um, so we will just change the start speed to something a bit bigger, so a bit more forceful. 10. Uh, we want it to be looping. Duration can be five, that's fine. Uh, we want it to emit upwards. So we want shape to be a cone, but we need it to fire directly upwards so we can change our rotation on the X nine, uh, minus 90 degrees. We want our size to go down over time. So size over lifetime. We want them to start small. So they'll get bigger and then they'll fade out um, as they go. Uh, we want to go up. We could do uh, start lifetime as sort of two. Uh, size of lifetime, let's just make, we don't want them to get as big. But emission, uh, right over time, we want a few more, so like 30. Maybe duration, let's put it to 3. No. 1. Angle, we could have kind of like this. Um, we might want to scale this down slightly. Um, but for now, let's just see how this looks. So if we go back to our ship, Go to prefabs, got a particle system here. We can just drag in our laser hit particles. And then back in our script, in our spaceship shooting script. So where we left a note, so instantiate our laser hit particles, uh, we can just do do that. So instantiate laser hit particles at hitinfo.point. Um, and we'll set them, we'll set their rotation to be the normal of what we're hitting. So we'll orientate them so they're pointing opposite to so the point there up matches the normal of what we hit. Which will make sense in just a second. Um, and actually we don't want them to loop actually. Because on, and then on the stop action we want them to destroy themselves. So we press play now. As we fire you can see that they are spawning. So actually, for, and so I'm just gonna to want to tweak them slightly. So for the duration, we want 0 0.5. Um, start lifetime, we'll have 0 0.4. Emission, I'm gonna have five. Shape, I'm gonna have cone at 25 on the angle. This can all be one, 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 one. Okay, so let's just stop them. Let's delete them from the scene. Hit play, let's see how that's looking. Okay, so they're going up, so we actually need to reset the rotation. So we want them to go down this, the forward axis, because that, that quaternion.look rotation bit of line of code is going to make them, make them point up. Yeah, so there we go. So as we fire and we hit the thing, the little particles come out. So yeah, the last thing to kind of do is we just want to put this code. Uh, we can get rid of this code because obviously we have the UI to show us this now. And then we just want to pop this code into this code. So only when the spaceship is occupied do we want to fire. So if I hit play now. Just fly over here, get in the ship. 
So we've got our ship here, we can fly around and we can we can mine and we've got these little particles flying off. Uh what we could do is we could have um sprites instead of meshes, but I quite like the the three D look. Uh, particles aren't my strong suit, so I'm sorry if the particle thing was just a bit rushed and not very well explained. I'm still learning about how to make like really nice kind of looking particles, but yeah, that's kind of our laser mining. The next step would be to make something like an asteroid uh, that we can mine that'll have health, and once it's once it's been reduced, it explodes. Uh, I did want to cover that in this video, but I know this video is very long already, so maybe we'll have a bit of a shorter video on that next time. But yeah, hopefully that all made sense. Um, it felt a little bit rushed at times to me, but I don't know if that came across in the video. As always, the project files for this are over on my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And like I said, those graphics, the boost bar and the crosshair, I'll put them up for free on the Patreon, which again is linked below. If there's anything else I've not covered so far that you'd like to see covered in this series, uh, let me know in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to see the asteroid video and the asteroid spawner script I'm going to make. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!